Matthew chapter 23. This is a favorite because a lot of people, they they accuse me of not walking in love. You're not walking in love, brother. You're not nice. Their understanding of what a prophet is is way off. I'm just saying. Read Matthew ch chapter 23. Jesus was not nice. And read Revelation chapter 11 where it talks about the two witnesses. The two witnesses were not nice. They're, listen, a true servant of God is going to be a blessing to those who are obedient, but is going to have harsh words for the disobedient. And, and those who are obedient, listen, true teaching from God, the Bible says the time is coming when people will no longer be willing to endure sound teaching. Sound teaching and sound doctrine is something that's hard to endure. It's painful. Now listen, listen to what Jesus said. And the reason I'm saying this is I make no apologies for being mean. If I say you who are lukewarm, God's going to vomit you up. Good. You lukewarm disobedient, go on and get. I don't want you in heaven. Are you kidding me? You foolish virgins will most certainly fall away before the bridegroom comes because you never obeyed God to build up your treasures in heaven. And so by the time that the cry rings out at midnight and you're in a desperate situation in the darkest hour, that's when the foolish virgins actually realize, oh, we never obeyed God enough to get enough oil. And then they want to go to the, the ones who do have oil and say, pray for us and lay hands in prayer over us that we might get your anointing too. And the wise ones are like, I spent years obeying God. I spent years building an ark. I spent years digging to the rock and building my foundation on the rock. It's not my fault that you foolish virgin never dug down to the rock to build your, to build on the rock. And now here comes a storm and you know what you're asking me to do is give you my foundation. You want me to, I'll pray for you, but ultimately you need to get out there and start building and start digging down to the rock. And while they went out to dig down to the rock, while they were out to go buy oil, while they went out to start desperately try to build an ark. I'm going to build an ark real quick. Think about during the days of the flood of Noah. Think about how many people quickly tried to build some sort of flotation, some sort of boat. You can't tell me there weren't people who had boats back then, too. There, were, there had to have been boats in the oceans and in the seas. But they just weren't big enough and sturdy enough and strong enough. I mean, think about it. Why wasn't there a big flotilla during the days of Noah? Why wasn't there at least a few people floating around in, in some boat that they had left at the dock of the sea? Because at the last minute they decided, oh, this, this boat is not sufficient to hold the kind of deluge that's coming down. And so Noah had to have built the ark very specific way, the design given to him by God for it to withstand that amount of water coming down. Because I'll tell you right now, other boats filled with water and sunk. Just saying, that's what's going to happen to the foolish virgins. Okay? The cry is going to ring out at midnight. That means there's going to be the darkest hour. Some disaster event. And you know what's going to happen? They're suddenly going to scramble to get oil. In the same way that if the flood were coming, here's Moses sitting back with his feet up on the ark. Okay? And the, and the wise virgins... They're going to be the same way. They're going to know in their heart. I got this. Praise God. I just feel so glorious in my heart. In the midst of persecution. In the midst of the storm. But the foolish virgin suddenly start scrambling. And oh we got to get oil for our vessel. We got to build a vessel first. Oh they didn't even have extra jars. I'm just saying says they they had lamps 
but they didn't have extra jars, let alone jars full, full of oil. So now there's a big scramble to start to try to obey God and, and get that stuff that you should have been obeying God years for years. And that's why false teachers rise up. But look what Jesus said. Here's, here's how you know a true teacher from God because they're harsh. They'll say, you who are lukewarm, God's going to vomit you up. The foolish virgins went to hell and there was no remedy for them. They went to hell. There was no opportunity for them to just say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me all my sins. That was come to an end. They didn't have enough oil in their vessel. You can believe all you want and click your heels together, but if you never dug down to the rock and built on the foundation, you're going to be standing on nothing but shifting sand. And when the flood comes up, if you think that you're going to quickly build a little raft, when you should have been working with Noah and you should already have your ark built, and all your kids should already be on the ark. That's why your kids aren't saved. Because you never, you, you never obeyed God, and you bore bad fruit. No good tree can bear bad fruit. So people with unsaved kids, they're bad trees. They bore bad fruit. Just saying. If your kids are saved and serving God, and you know in your heart they're right with God, good job, because you have borne good fruit. Here's Jesus, Matthew chapter 23. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, so you must obey them, do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, and they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for men to see. So Jesus is talking, and then verse 15, Woe! To you teachers of the law, you Pharisees, you hypocrites. You travel over land and sea to win a single convert, and when he becomes one, you make him twice as much the son of hell as you are. In other words, they travel over land and sea to win one convert, and then they're going to teach him that God doesn't speak today. Travel over land and sea to win one convert, and then teach him about Mary and the rosary and praying to... Mother Mary, and Jesus is still just a little baby. They travel over land and sea to win one convert. You blind guides. Now, look at what it says. I'm going to skip a lot. You should read it. But Jesus is not being nice. Woe to you, teachers of the law, you Pharisees, you hypocrites. You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our forefathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourself that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of sin of your forefathers. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? Therefore I am sending you prophets and wise men to, and teachers. Some of them you will kill and crucify. Others you will flog in the synagogues and pursue from town to town. And so upon you will come the righteous blood that has been shed on the earth from, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. I tell you the truth, all this will come upon this generation. So we see two things. One, God's people are being put to death. And God's prophets and saints are being, their blood is being shed. So, anybody who's a true teacher from God is going to teach some harsh stuff. The truth from God's word. But for those who are obedient, those who've laid up treasures in heaven, for the wise virgins who have vessels full of oil. You don't need me to tell you well done my good and faithful servant. Because the power of the Holy Spirit will tell you at midnight when all hell breaks loose in your life. And everything is going bad. You'll know by the Holy Spirit that you have not only do you have plenty of oil in your vessel. But you got this. The Lord will speak to you in your heart and you'll just know. You don't need me to tell you that. 
God will tell you at the appointed time when you need to draw on that anointing. When you need it there, he'll be there for you in the same way that when God said, told you to do something and ask, and you obeyed him, and you were right there for God. When he said do this, you did it. When, you, when he said do that, you, you obeyed God, you obeyed God, you obeyed God. And now when it's time, in the darkest hour, when the hardships are there, and you call out to God, you're going to be in the presence of the Lord. And when the foolish virgins come along, you're going to know, because they're going to be like, I can't believe this is happening. And they're going to start complaining while you're sitting there in the presence of God, just praising God, saying, thank God, this is the end days. I knew this was going to happen. The Lord showed me in a dream. My vessel is full of oil right now. Anyway, praise the Lord. And you're sitting there in a jail cell next up to be put to death. And you're just like, going, oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm going home to be with the Lord. Meanwhile, the fool foolish virgins... <laughs> Don't have enough oil in their vessel. They're going to panic. Pray for me. And you know what? They will all fall away because none of them have any treasures in heaven. So there's nothing in heaven for them anyway. There's nothing there for them. If they die right now, there's nothing. They didn't lay up any treasures. So that really, in a sense, all they have is in this earth. That's why they fall away and they get a few more years. They take the mark of the beast maybe. And they get a few more years in this world to experience the wrath of God. Let me tell you, those who miss the bridegroom, those who miss the rapture, there is no second chance. You will be condemned. Now, unless you're one of the 144,000, in which case you know it, and you're going to be like, yeah, I got this. So if you, when you miss the rapture, the 144,000, you're going to know because you're, you're going to have an encounter with an angel who's going to put that seal on your forehead and you're going to be like, oh, no wonder I was left behind. And there's only 144,000 of them and they're all men. So And they're single and celibate like Paul and no lie was found in their mouth. That eliminates Claire for sure. <laughs> if you don't like me, listen, I'm being nice. Wait till the two witnesses come. Because I haven't shut up the heavens and said, proclaimed, it will not rain. Drought. I have not done that. I'm being nice. I haven't said, you wicked and evil people, you have taken the mark of the beast, and now God is going to give you blood to drink as you deserve, because you have shed the blood of God's prophets and saints. I'm not doing that. The Bible says the two witnesses have the power to call down the curses of God as frequently as they want, whenever they want. They're calling down curses from God, the plagues from God. I'm being nice. I haven't called down a single plague. I'm just, I'm just warning people. You know I'm not one of the two witnesses. If I was one of the two witnesses, y'all would have been judged by now. <laughs> just saying. I would be sitting here going, yep, it's not going to rain for the next three years. <laughs> like, yeah, we're gonna next week we're turning the waters into blood. And y'all are going to have to drink it. Because you shed the blood of God's prophets and saints. Oh, guess what? By the end of this week, there's going to be locusts released into the, to the earth. And they're going to have the sting of a scorpion. And they're going to attack every single person on the face of the planet who does not have the seal of God. That means everybody who's left behind, folks. I want to stay behind to help. Well, if you're not one of the 144,000, you do not because you're going to come under attack by the, the locust with the sting of a scorpion that, in, that torment the inhabitants of the earth for five months. That's 150 days. You really want to stay behind? The Bible says that during those days, people will seek death and cannot find it. In other words, you can't even die. You're worse off than somebody who died <laughs> in a car accident. I'm just saying. Those who are left behind, the foolish virgins, there is no remedy. Claire still small voice is teaching you lies. Anyway, praise God. I like to put Claire in still small voice in a lot of my videos. I like to mention her because I get a lot of comments that I can respond to. 
and I've persuaded at least five people that she's a false teacher. I've gotten message from people saying, yeah, I listened to her, and I watched your video, and I did the research in the Bible, and they're like, yeah, she's a false teacher, and I thought she was a real teacher, and now I realize. And God has to take the blinders off your eyes because we're so conditioned to to listen to that cooing over you. Boop, 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 boop. Whenever you see a teacher that's only teaching happy, go lucky, lovey, 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 lovey. I'm sorry, that's what cultic people do. That's what demonic, wicked people do. I'm telling you right now. I have listen, this one time I had to I had to rent a room in a house way back when I was younger. All I had was like 500 bucks, and I moved in the pl first place that all I had to do was pay 300 cash. No first and last month's rent, no security deposit, no background check. She was just like, oh, you're going to pay 300 bucks cash right now? There's your room. Thanks. So I moved right in, and then I had to find a job and start working. But this lady... When I first met her, I walked into the house. She's like, oh, hi, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, here's the room right here, sweetheart. And she was just so nice. She was just the nicest lady. And it made me feel like, okay, well, I just need a room to rent. And she was not attractive at all. But turns out she was like a drug addict. This lady was into some crazy stuff, dude. Seriously. And she was just so nice to me. Oh, sweetheart, this is your room. Do you want a glass of orange juice? And I was like, I don't want nothing from you, lady. <laughs> I'm just going to go into my room and lock the door. <laughs> Here's your 300 bucks. Leave me alone. <laughs> Turns out she was on something. I don't know what it was. Some sort of weird chemical smell. Probably methamphetamine, but honestly, I don't know. But it was a weird chemical smell. And something she was smoking. So, my guess is it was meth. But, could have been crack, could have been anything, I don't know. Anyway, she was all nice. Just like Joel Osteen. Folks, you just be the best you you can be. Oh, just don't worry about being lukewarm. Cattle deal with all that. 